There's loads of cool plugins on the Fab Marketplace for Unreal Engine, but some of them can get a little expensive. So today I've compiled a list of five entirely free plugins that you should be using in your projects. As always, if you want to enable any of these plugins after getting them on the Marketplace, all of the links for which will be down below in the description for this video. You go to Edit and then Plugins, where you get this new little tab and you can find the plugins that you're looking for. So the first one that we're going to be enabling will be auto size comments. Simply enable it and then restart your editor. This plugin is fairly straightforward where if I just open up any random blueprint that I have in my project, when I make a comment, you can just select anything and press C to make comments as usual. Now, if I take any of the nodes inside of this comment and I move it around, the comment actually increases and decreases in size based on what the actual contents of it are. Compared to how it usually works in Unreal, where you can size your comment manually, but if you then move anything that's inside of the comment out of it, it's no longer part of that comment. And down here in the bottom left corner, we also have a couple of extra buttons now we can replace with selected nodes. So let's say that I have just some weird uh, nodes here, like a delay, and then maybe that goes into like a gate that goes into like destroy actor or something like that, just as an example. If I select these and I go back in here, I can replace with selected nodes and then the comment just moves to the nodes that I currently have selected. We also can add selected nodes to the existing comment with the button right next to it. So now all of those are inside of it. Likewise, if I select a selection of nodes and I press this remove, it removes them from the comments. And we can also clear all nodes, which makes the comments not have the nodes inside of it anymore. Up next, we have the data table function library light. This is just a set of functions to work with data tables. So let's enable that and see what's going on there. Now, I should mention that this is the free version of a actual paid plugin, which still is fairly cheap, uh, all things considered. But the full version has a bunch more extra functions to make data tables even more powerful. This free version comes with only a handful of functions, but still is very, very useful, and I would recommend you give it a shot. So again, let's open up one of our blueprints here, because one of the amazing things that this does is it adds a for each loop for data tables. So for each data table row, it is just uh, any random data table. It automatically populates the data table row struct type, because as you could see before, if I uh, clear this out to be a value of nothing, which we can do by reset to default value, this is a wildcard. So that gets updated depending on the data table row type, just like a normal data table uh, getting node would. Then we have a loop body. So this is just a normal for each loop. Uh, we can break this and we can do whatever we want in the loop for each entry inside of a data table. It's not like you couldn't usually do this, right? Because usually what you would do is you would just uh, get data table row names and then you would for each loop over those and then you would get data table row of, of that name and then you would make sure that these are the two same data table. Essentially, this node is just this entire thing collapsed down into a single easy to use node. Alternatively, what it also uh, gives you is get data table as array struct. So this just gets you the struct in an array of the data table, which you can then still for each loop over. But if you, for instance, want to get a specific index out of that data table, you know that you want to get like the fourth entry in your data table or whatever, you can just get this as a array and then we can get a reference or a copy. Reference is kind of worthless at this point because you're not going to be able to edit it anyway. Finally, we have get data table size and this just gives you an enter of the size of a given data table. So just a couple of quick easy functions to use regarding data tables. Hey, if you're enjoying this content and it's helping you out, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. You can also leave a comment on this video expressing what you liked or asking questions that I can cover in future videos. And then of course, if you want to stay up to date with those new uploads, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel as well. 
Next up, we have a very interesting one, which is asset thumbnails. It's actually a topic that I want to make a video on how to set this up yourself in C++ for a while. And eventually, I'm sure I will. But here in my own project, if we go into uh, my items folder, which surely is somewhere in my very well-organized project. There we are. Uh, in my item assets, if I open this up, you can see that every item has its own image as also the ui icon here in unreal it uses the same icon that it uses in game as it does in the editor it's just kind of nice and easy to let you pick items at a glance this plugin lets you do that for effectively anything that you'd like the way that it works here is it sets up a interface that you can put on any asset or any blueprint that you want so what we do is we go into this Niagara respawner blueprint that I have. We simply go to class settings and we implement a interface. And the interface we'll add will be the asset thumbnail interface, which comes with the plugin. That gives us two functions here in the interfaces, which is get thumbnail title, which we can just give a value. Of course, it can be a variable if you want it to be. And number two is obviously the thumbnail icon. So again, this can be a variable if you want it to be, but let's say we use the AI spawn point as our icon here. If we then open this up, we can see that it now uses that icon as the thumbnail, and it actually shows you the title text that you put in, in the top left corner here. And of course, a list of free plugins isn't quite done without Paper ZD. Now, I'm not going to go too much in depth about Paper ZD, but essentially what it is, is it is a framework for you to be able to set up animation blueprints for your Paper 2D characters. If you're interested in 2D game development within Unreal Engine, I do have an entire free course here on YouTube that gets you started with 2D game development, and that includes Paper ZD to a certain extent. This is not a nice to have if you're doing 2D game development. This is a need to have. You want to use Paper ZD alongside Paper 2D if you're making 2D games or like 2D HD games or whatever in Unreal Engine. Double click cast. Now this one is only available up to Unreal 5.5 at the moment when I'm recording this. I don't see a reason why just migrating it to a 5.6 project shouldn't work, but I haven't tried that yet. So this is a super, super easy plugin uh, to understand. And that is just when you cast something, double-clicking the casting node opens up that class, something that honestly should just be built-in functionality for the engine. So here we are in the BP third-person character. We also have a BP third-person game mode. So if I just get the game mode real quick and I cast that to the BP third-person game mode, Simply double-clicking this will now open up the game mode, in my case on my second monitor. And this works with both Blueprint classes, and if you have a C++ project with C++ classes in it, it also works for C++. Obviously, the example project that I have here is entirely Blueprint, so if I open up this, it's going to ask me to generate project files and that kind of stuff. Don't really feel like doing that just for this, also it errors out anyway. But this is a super simple feature that I don't have anything more to explain about that I think Epic should just implement within the engine, like, now. And that's all five entirely free to download, use, and install plugins that you can get on the Fab Marketplace right now. I'll leave a link down below in the description to all five of these, and hopefully some of these can prove useful to you people while developing your games. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. My Cave Students tier supporters, Oiku, Earl, Monserville, Erno, and my Cave Digger tier supporters, Mauricio Farias.